I'm Doug Larson with the Little Traverse Bay Bands of Odawa Indians. I run the Little Traverse Bay Bands of Odawa Indians Fisheries Enhancement Facility. Today we're getting ready to stock 677 lake sturgeon into the Sturgeon River. Annually we stock a load of sturgeon into the Sturgeon River. Our target this year was about 500 lake sturgeon. We had a good year and we were able to produce 677 fish of varying sizes. Uh, this is our lot that's going out today. These fish are collected in partnership with the Michigan Department of Natural Resources and Michigan State University out of the Black River. The, uh, these fish were raised from egg. We collected eggs early in May with the help of MSU and Michigan DNR. We spawned males and females in uh, two to one pairings, two males per every female. We brought them back to our facility and reared the eggs up until hatch and from hatch they were moved into our, our aquaculture tanks. These particular fish were collected this year, collected in May like I said, and have been raised through this part of August. Brought up on diets of freeze-dried Artemia, sea monkeys, for those of you who've never seen Artemia, and, and brought up to a size where they could be fed blood worms or chironomid larvae until stock out size. Most of these fish are implanted with a coated wire tag which is a piece of metal that we inject into a specific location based on sampling year. And from there we can tell if these fish were raised in the hatchery or if fish we collect down the road were, were reared naturally in the, uh, in the river. Uh, a subset of these fish are also tagged with uh, pit tags. And these tags are tags that uh, essentially go on the back side of the fish. They're embedded with a serial number. We can scan those tags with a reader when we, when we sample them later down the road in nature. And from there, we'll be able to tell uh, what this fish identification is. And we can go back to our notes and see if we've catch, ca captured that fish before, um, if, we've captured the fish before, if we've captured the fish before, and then also how large the fish was when we captured it previously. We'll also know, of course, that it's a hatchery reared fish. During the first year, we expect these fish to take residency in the Sturgeon River. Uh, their first year strategy is generally to burrow so we expect them to stay in whatever substrate they can find after they're released today. And um, they generally remain in the, the river for the first one to two years, and then we expect them to move out into Burt Lake for advanced growth. Six hundred and seventy-seven lake sturgeon ready for transport. A handful of these into the buckets, and then we'll take these three buckets down. Well, we're gonna go ahead and get started here. I guess I want to thank everybody for uh, coming out here. Uh, this is uh, Doug Larson. These are pretty much his babies. He's our hatchery technician. Uh, this is Kevin Donner. Uh, he's a Great Lakes fisheries biologist. He has a, a quite to do, or at least a hand in this as well. And then Bill Oming, and I think that's it. For, uh, uh, my name is Doug Craven. I'm the Natural Resource Department Director. We have Adrian Corral back here, also our senior uh, fisheries technician. Chris. Oh, and Chris, he's hiding behind. Uh, Chris Day, another one of our inland technicians. Um, then we have a couple of our YCC kids. So this is Wingush Craven, and this is Alex. Um, these guys are part of our YCC, our Youth Conservation Corps um, program. So How about Alex me? Dewey. <laughs> and this is Weed <laughs> uh, So again, thanks for coming out here today. Uh, these sturgeon here, I'll have uh, uh, Doug tell you a little bit more about them. Uh, this is the second year that we've raised them. Uh, he can let you know how many we had, how many um, we are going to be releasing today, and maybe a little bit about uh, each of these sturgeon. But then we'll just kind of have everybody that wants to come on down. You can hang on to them, you can feel them, and you can let them go in the water over here. Um, or I would recommend over here so they don't just kind of tumble off into the water here. But you can come on over here. I think we have a little over 600. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to uh, Doug. Thanks, Doug. Um, I don't have a ton to add. Just want to say thank you to everybody that was involved in the project. Obviously, um, it can be quite difficult to raise fish at times. It's taxing, and uh, everybody who provided effort in this project, it was a big thank you to everyone. Uh, those of you who don't know, the Sturgeon effort is a collaborative effort with Michigan State University and Michigan Department of Natural Resources. Uh, we all participated this year in an egg collection. So last year, we collected, um, we collected fish from the juvenile stage. And unlike last year, we were able to collect from egg stage this year, and it produced quite a bit more success. Last year, we were able to produce 202 sturgeon. This year, uh, with a much smaller take, we were able to produce 600 and, 
681 fish. 677 of those fish are going today into the Sturgeon River. The remaining six fish are actually at the, the hatchery right now still. Two of them are going to re be retained at the hatchery as grow out fish. An additional two albinos are going to be retained so that we can try to get them a little bit bigger. We want to make sure that those fish are, are well cared for, so we'll retain those as well. And then the final two are being retained so that they can be transferred to uh, Pelston High School into the ninth grade science class so that, that uh, the class will get the opportunity to uh, bring the classroom, bring the outdoors into the classroom through our Sturgeon in the Classroom program. So that's the first year that we've gotten to do this. It's a partnership with education. We're really excited about the program and we know Pelston is excited with the pro about the program. So again, I just want to say thanks to everyone involved and uh, I have to give an extra special thanks to Mr. Bill Oming who produced the biodiesel that we use to bring the fish here today. So we actually brought the fish here today without consuming any natural diesel. It's all biodiesel. So that's a big deal for the tribe as well. And again, just thanks to everybody who is involved in this project. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome everybody down. Please come grab a fish and, and feel free to put it in the river, say your own little blessing, and try to avoid the ducks. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions I can answer before we go? Why do we okay. have to avoid the ducks? Kevin is going to do a quick blessing and then uh, come on down. Or, uh, somebody's going to do a quick blessing. <laughs> They so uh, we, like we have some Seima here, so if anybody would like to yeah. put a little Seima and down the before they uh, release a the fish, uh, feel, the free, to, feel free to do that. Uh, so we'll hang on to the Seima for that, uh, for those of you that are interested in doing so. So without further ado, any elders want to come on down first and Please. release a couple, and then we'll, we'll have the youth come and get started. And Doug can kind of help guide you but pretty much just cradle cradle it in your hand there and then uh, yes just so release it lower it down okay, feel it. free i'd like to do a little as well say love you little guy oh this one's um Make sure you watch as they are put in, put in the water. They're pretty neat fish. Some of them will hang out here, but the majority of them will go out and dive down and get ready to spend their first winter in the river. I'll just get out of the way and let you guys do your thing. <laughs> Yeah, let's get him up there and we'll have him release the fish. Hey, do you want to come put a fish in the water? 